This is part 17 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to handle multiple forms in an ASP.NET Core Razor page. Let's understand this with an example. Consider this Edit Razor page. We use this to edit an existing employee details. To load this page, the browser issues a GET request. To handle this GET request, ASP.NET Core Razor Pages framework looks for a method that is named onGET in the corresponding page model class. After the employee data is loaded, obviously we can make changes to it and when we click the update button, the browser issues a POST request. To handle this POST request, ASP.NET Core Razor Pages framework looks for a method that is named ONPOST, again in the corresponding page model class. ASP.NET Core Razor Pages framework uses a naming convention to find the appropriate handler method in the corresponding page model class. The word ON is prefixed to the request verb. So for the GET request, it looks for ON GET and for POST, it looks for ON POST. Similarly, for PUT, ON PUT. At the moment, on this Edit Razor page, we have a single form. Things slightly change when we have multiple forms on a given Razor page. We have two forms here, Form 1 for updating employee notification preferences and Form 2 for updating employee data. At the moment, on our Edit Razor page, we only have the Edit form. We want this Notification Preferences form as well. To start with, we need two properties in the corresponding Page Model class. This is our Edit Page Model class. In addition to these two properties, Employee and Photo, we need another two public properties. Let's start with a Boolean property. I'm going to name this Notify and let's decorate this with bind property attribute. We discussed the significance of this attribute in our previous videos in this series. In addition to notify, we need another string property. Let's call this message. In a bit, we'll see how we are going to make use of these two properties. And then in our display template, we want this notification preferences form. So the heading here is notification preferences. So let's include an H1 for that. And the text is Notification Preferences. After the H1 element, we want a form. And when we submit this form, we want to issue a POST request. So let's set the method attribute to POST. Inside this form, we want this checkbox, Receive Email Notification when my details change. So let's include an input element and bind this input element to this Notify Boolean property we have included in the Page Model class. So for that, let's use ASP-4 tag helper and then specify the name of the property, Notify. For styling, let's use the Bootstrap class, Form-Check-Input. To display this text, Receive Email Notification when my details change, let's include a label and then bind it again to notify property. For styling, let's use form-check-label bootstrap class. And then this is the text that we want inside the label. And then again, for styling, let's wrap the input element and the label with the div element. And then use the bootstrap class form check. Below the checkbox and label, we want this button update notification preferences. This is a submit button. So let's include a button of type submit. And let's use the bootstrap btn and btn primary classes for styling. The text on the button is update notification preferences. In the page model class, I'm going to include a handler method and let's name it on post update notification preferences. This is going to be a public method, returns void. Now, when this button, update notification preferences is clicked, we want this handler method to be called. And we want this handler method to set this message public property dynamically, depending on the value of this Boolean notify property. And remember, this property is bound to this checkbox. So if this checkbox is checked, then the value of this property is true otherwise false. And depending on this property value, we want to set this public message property. And here is the code for that. If notify property is true, we are setting the message property to thank you for turning on notifications. Otherwise, we are setting it to you have turned off email notifications. Next, we want to display the value that we have in this message property just below 
this update notification preferences button. Let's do that using a bootstrap alert. To get the bootstrap alert, we use a div element along with these two bootstrap classes, alert and alert-primary. In the alert, let's display the value that we have in the message property. We don't want to display this alert all the time. We only want to display it when the message property is not null or empty. At the moment, on our edit razor page, we have these two forms. Let's separate these two forms using a horizontal row. So just after the closing form tag, let's include an HR element here. Now, when this button is clicked, update notification preferences, we want this handler method to be called on post update notification preferences. Similarly, when we click this update button on our form 2, we want this on post method to be called. To specify this, we use asp-page-handler tag helper. Notice on form 1, we have set it to update notification preferences. This on post prefix here is optional. Whether we include it or not, we'll have the same behavior. And when we submit this form 2, we want this on post method to be called. So we have set asp-page-handler to on post. Let's quickly make these two changes. On the first form, let's set asp-page-handler to update notification preferences. On the second form, let's set it to on post and then run our project in debug mode. At the moment, we are on the home page. Let's navigate to employees list page, click edit on one of the employees, and then let's place breakpoints on these two handler methods, on post and on post update notification preferences, and then let's click this button. Notice, as expected, this handler method is executed, on post update notification preferences, and when we continue execution, we have a null reference exception. That's because this employee property on the model is null. To fix this, notice in the URL, we have the ID of the employee that we are editing as a route parameter. So let's stop debugging. Include ID parameter on this method. Model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically map the value from the URL to this parameter. We'll then use this ID parameter to retrieve the respective employee details and then store them in this employee property, which our display template is bound to. To retrieve the respective employee details, we will use this injected employee repository. On this, we have get employee method. To this, we pass the incoming ID and then whatever details we get, let's store it in the employee property. And then let's run our project again in debug mode. At the moment, we don't have this checkbox checked. When we click update notification preferences, our handler method is hit as expected. When we continue the execution, we see the message, you have turned off email notifications. When I check this checkbox and then click this button, we see a different message now. On the other hand, when we edit this data on this employee edit form, and then when we click this update button, notice our on post handler method is hit. And when we continue the execution, the data is updated and we are redirected to the employees list page. Notice you can see employee name is updated as expected. Now, if you're wondering, how does the framework know which handler method to execute? Well, if you look at the URL, it's passed as a query string parameter by default. By default, the handler name is passed in the URL as a query string parameter. If you want to pass it as a route parameter instead, all you have to do is include a placeholder for the route parameter in the display template, as you can see right here. So let's quickly make this change. First, let's stop debugging. This handler parameter is optional, so let's include a question mark and then run our project again. Notice now the name of the handler is passed in the URL as a route parameter. But when I click this update button, we don't see the handler name. That's because we are redirected to a different page, in this case, to the employees list page. So when this kind of a redirection happens, and if you want to see the name of the handler, then launch browser developer tools by pressing F12. And then let's click edit on this employee. Scroll all the way down and then click the update button. Notice the initiator column here. You can see our handler name on post in the URL as a route parameter. 
that's it in this video. Thank you for listening.